What's up everybody, this is Kasim from Passive Passion Online Income and in today's video we are going to be touching on the subject of fastest ROI, in other simple terms, fastest return on investment. Now, over the years, I have dabbled in several different businesses, all right, making loads and loads of money. However, I often get asked this question by especially the newbies, you know, who are stepping into new businesses or aspiring entrepreneurs. They often ask me this question, that which is the best business from your opinion? Now, again, whatever views I'm sharing in this video is all my own personal opinion, right? So, again opinions can be subjective okay and i don't want you guys to start cherry picking and then making a big nuisance out of it all right so the question that i often get asked is which business as per again my opinion happens to be the best in terms of making the fastest roi all right now to be very blunt and to be very straight there isn't a clear-cut answer to this because again now just because if one business turns out to bring me the most uh, or i would say the fastest roi okay in shortest amount of time that doesn't mean if i am aspiring or thinking of starting a new business i should just you know ignore that idea Again, you see, business is a fluctuating entity, guys, and what is going to basically determine the success of your business are going to be lots and lots of factors, all right? Right from the uh, infrastructure, right from the amount of capital that's going to be required that you would have to inject into your business in its growth, and also factors like manpower, operational costs, location, if it happens to be an offline business. But if it's an online business, you need to consider your uh, incoming traffic. You need to look at the demographics, who are your major clients or customers, you know, which country are you gonna cater to the most? So there are lots and lots of factors to consider and then make your own decision. Now, let me go by each and every business that I have, I mean, put my hands into or tested the waters with. So the first business which I started was a small restaurant, all right, which didn't work out, all right. And the reason for that was because I took the market for granted. I also did not respect the competition that did exist in that particular locality or in that particular area. And I just felt that having a multi-cuisine menu, you know, which uh, none of the other restaurants were offering at that point of time would make my business the most successful. However, I was wrong. All right. I did not invest much in marketing. I didn't invest in uh, having enough manpower. And this is what actually led to the downfall of my business at that time. So after learning my lesson from there on, whatever ventures I had started, let it be my saloons, let it be my smoothie bars, let it be the coffee shops. It all turned out to be a success because I had learned from my mistakes, you know. And before starting any new venture, I always took out enough time to do my due diligence. Okay. I looked into lots and lots of different factors, right from the location, right from the kind of different uh, clientele that was visiting that particular locality. And also looking into the likes and dislikes of each and every client that was walking into the restaurant or into that particular business establishment. So you need to consider all these factors before jumping into any conclusion. So yes, in terms of starting my offline businesses, okay, uh, it did take me quite a lot of time to make my ROI back because I think the first uh, successful business venture that I had, which was a coffee shop, it took me roughly about, I would say, 14 months to make my ROI back. Yeah, and that is a significant amount of time, you know, especially when you have lots of new businesses these days where you can really make your ROI back fast. So yeah, at that point of time, it took me roughly about 14 months to make my ROI back. And then from there on, whichever new businesses I was starting on, it didn't take me much time. The maximum was a year, but the business which has actually helped me to make my ROI back in the fastest amount of time, two businesses. One of them is uh, my dropshipping business. And the second one is self-publishing business. Now, with dropshipping, again, if you guys don't know how it works, you need to look for products or goods. I mean, things which really, really have a strong demand for in the market. 
all right you need to tie up with the particular retailer or wholesaler and make arrangements in delivering the product directly to the destination of the respective customer all right and uh, it's not necessary that you need to store in the goods it's not necessary that you need to have a warehouse all right or a go down to store all your goods but you need to make sure that your infrastructure and your system of getting the good from point a and delivering it to point z is going to be foolproof all right because let's say if you're gonna leave room for mistakes wherein even if one small important point is not taken into consideration while delivering the product to a particular customer it can really really put your business in jeopardy so each and every factor needs to be taken into consideration seriously and thereby you need to make sure that there is no compromises made when you are starting out a dropshipping business. What will make your dropshipping business effective? Once again, as I said a few seconds earlier, is you need to look for products that are in strong demand, all right? You have to take ample time to do the research, go through different markets, go through different clientele requests and desires and needs, and thereby make a decision on what product you are going to be investing your money in all right the dropshipping businesses that i'm into are electronical devices electronical accessories we've got soft toys for kids we've got home appliances and we're also into several beauty products where we get you know the hair treatment products from brazil and uh, different european countries as well so again i'm not going to be going through each and every one of them because again you know this video would turn out to be very boring it may perhaps go for two hours or two and a half hours and um, i prefer to keep my videos really short and to the point so yeah drop shipping is a great business opportunity you can get into it but again your goal while getting started with any business initially has to be to keep your expenses to the minimum all right you don't want to be spending exorbitant amounts of money if you do not see the results coming in you are going to get dejected you know and that is not a good feeling so yes take out your time do your due diligence like for example if you're based in us and if you see that there's a strong need for let's say non-sticky pants all right and if you know that there's a good wholesaler who's based in let's say japan for example right and if you already have strong connections with with a certain person living in let's say any particular state in yours or it could be in uh, close proximity to your town start taking orders you know start with a small number of orders maybe it could be 50 pieces and if the order turns out to be successful wherein this retailer comes back to you and tells you that you know what i would like to get more supplies from you so perhaps you could increase the orders from the next consignment so that thereby you can continue increasing it and yes having a website would definitely help and allow you to leverage faster okay and it will also give you that ability to upscale your dropshipping business all right so the recent product that i've launched into my dropshipping business are my cashews and my tea products and it has turned out to be very successful because even in times of these where people do rely on you know receiving their goods in a convenient manner all right where it could be delivered to their respective doorsteps this concept has helped us a lot so yeah guys so take out your time do your due diligence make sure that the product that you are going to be getting into is something for which there is strong demand in the market all right So drop shipping is one. Now other business that you could also try getting into, but again, I would not recommend that you get started with this right from the, let's say if you do not have any business experience at all, and if you're gonna get started with Amazon FBA, then that is a bad idea. I would tell you, you need to start with a business that does not require a huge amount of capital or a significant amount of capital, all right? So to get started with Amazon FBA, I would say you need to have at least a minimum of 20 to 30 grand in hand, yes. If someone tells you that you need something that is less than that, yes, you perhaps may need. But remember this, all right, remember this. It is going to take you a very long time to upscale if you're going to be lacking funds. Because once you start the distribution and supply of your Amazon FBA products, all right, and when the time arises for you to upscale, and if you do not have enough funds, then you really, really are going to suffer with your business. Because you need to remember, in business, timing is everything. If you're going to be starting a business, let's say right now we are in the month of April, if you start a business in the month of April, and obviously we all are going to be having a certain goal, right, in our mind, that by December 2020, I want my business to be bringing in a turnover of, let's say, 30K per month or 50K per month. I'm talking about net profit, not gross profit, but net profit, all right? So considering all these factors, you need to make sure that you have enough cash reserves in hand. So make sure that you guys take your time and, uh, you know, do not do anything in haste. All right, so Amazon Amazon FBA. Let me share my experience with Amazon FBA. So the first product that I actually tested on Amazon FBA were a nut and a cereal bars. Okay. 
Now again, the nut and cereal bars were something for which I did see that there was a lot of demand in the market. But uh, on the contrary, what actually happened was my expectations of seeing these products turning out to be successful. What I mean to say is when I started the nut and cereal bar business using the concept of Amazon FBA, I found out that these bars and cereals turned out to be more successful in the Middle East and African regions because in the North American market, the market was saturated, all right? And I just could see that there was so much of competition where for me, it, it was going to become very hard, you know, to run my business. But still, it did turn out uh, to work in my favor because I've, I found out and, and I discovered that there was a very good demand in the Middle East and African markets. And that's where I continued supplying the nuts and cereal bars. So again, would I advise people to go with it? Would I advise people to get started with Amazon business? Absolutely not. As I said earlier, it does require a significant amount of capital to get started with. Now let's talk about one of my favorites, which is self-publishing business. Now, yes, me and many of my students have been running our successful self-publishing businesses for years. All right. Now, again, what makes this one of my favorites, just like dropshipping business, is that it does not require huge amounts of capital to get started with it. If you have, let's say, if you've got three thousand to ten thousand dollars, you can upscale and expand your self-publishing business really, really quick. But again, having said that, you need to make sure that you do your due diligence properly, you study the market properly, you do your research. Okay, now again, I'm talking about the publishing business, you've got three different business entities, remember that. So one is the low content or no content market. Again, if you really, really cannot spend any good amount of money, I would say even a $500 or $1,000, then okay, perhaps you could try your luck with low content or no content a publishing business. Then you've got the fiction publishing business. Now, fiction publishing business does take time, guys, to start seeing results and to start seeing your ROI coming in, okay? It could take at least a year to a year and a half to start seeing your ROI coming. Now, nonfiction, which is what I love, which is what I teach my students, is a market where you can start seeing the results really, really fast, just like that. So considering that factor or keeping this factor in mind, it's important that you get started with nonfiction. Now, again, if you're starting with nonfiction, you need to understand that and you need to respect the clientele that is coming and buying your books. So do not put shitty books, you know, just by thinking that, okay, even if I put a 10K words or let's say 15K words, people are just gonna come and pick up my books and buy. No, do not get into that kind of a mentality or with that kind of a mindset. Respect your readers, respect your customers, respect your clientele and put out books which they are gonna be loving, which is gonna be solving their problems, no matter what it is, okay? Put yourself in the customer's shoes, put yourself in the reader's shoes, and then make decisions accordingly. So self-publishing business, yes, is one of the most great opportunities for any aspiring entrepreneur to get started with. And what's best is it gives you the flexibility to work from any corner of the world. All you need is a good, fantastic Wi-Fi connection and a good laptop or a PC. Yeah. So if you guys are thinking of getting started with any business, my recommendation would be self-publishing business. If you want to know how to get started, want to know where to get started, contact me, get enrolled in my program. Not only will you be getting my coaching, but you will also be included in my community where you will have access to my free self-publishing course. Yes, at the moment it is free. All right, but very soon I will be putting out in the market and there will be a fee to get enrolled in the course. So make use of this opportunity. And now, yes, since we are going through a difficult and uh, tough situation, I have been receiving requests from people asking me to give them discounts and reduce my price. I don't want to say this uh, right now on the camera, but again, it depends on case to case basis. If I feel that you really, really are in a tight situation, but if I see that you are someone who is serious, and uh, you know earnest enough to get started with this business then why not i will do whatever it takes to help you guys get started but again only contact me if you're really really serious all right otherwise let's respect each other's time and not waste each other's time all right hope you guys found this video useful and if you haven't subscribed to my channel till now please do subscribe click on the notification bell so that you are notified with all my videos all right that's it from me for now you guys take care i'll be seeing you soon Ciao, God bless.